Chicken has always been a popular delicacy in Kenya, mainly because of its well-earned reputation as a good source of protein. A farmer may target the meat market. There are many selling points that a farmer may look into, including butcheries, open-air markets, restaurants, events, and so much more. The demand for meat is even higher, especially for broiler meat, owing to its minimal fat and cholesterol levels. This gives the poultry meat farmer an edge in this business. In today's episode, we feature one of the front runners in this business, that is Kenchik. Not known to many, they have their own poultry farm, a state-of-the-art hatchery, as well as a processing factory. Here, you will have an experience of farm to fork. And welcome to today's episode of Kilimo na Biashara. Today, we focus on poultry farming. But then, poultry farming is quite broad. We already showed you how to rear chicken for egg production. But today, it's chicken for meat production. And we are at Kenchik and we are going to show you the entire process of farm to fork. Join me. Hi Linda. Oh yeah. I'm fine, thank you. Nice to meet you. Well, welcome, welcome. Wow. Welcome to the Kenchik Hatchery. Wow, I've never been to Kenchik. I didn't know that you have a farm, Kenchik. What happens here? Well, you know, Linda, welcome to you know one part of our business. You know, Kenchik's an integrated uh, poultry business. We have farms. We have broiler farms. We produce day-old chicks. We obviously hatch them here up to 1.2 million eggs a week. I didn't know you had your chicken. And distribute them all the way across Kenya and Uganda as well. So what should we expect here? This is probably one of the most modern hatcheries in Southern Africa. Uh, first built in back in 2011, we've extended it again. Mm -hmm. The very latest technology. Mm -hmm. And this is really about producing high quality day old chicks, mm -hmm. which will go into the market, mm -hmm. uh, bought by uh, Kenchik farmers and many mm -hmm. farmers, mm -hmm. for them to thrive and grow in the poultry industry. This is the hatchery. The other place that we'll be visiting also will be... Later on in the, in the farm to fork journey, you're going to end up today at our processing plant, which is again one of the most modern, where we process all our chicken, which you eat, either a branded product or out in, a, as in supermarkets or in, re, in the restaurant trade as well. So you're going to take us through the entire journey from farm to fork? Unfortunately, I can't. I've got to go and see a customer this morning, but I was very firm that I needed to be with you. And I think, you know, one of the things I just wanted to say to yourself and K24, Ken Chick's business is all about high food quality. We certainly believe that the consumer has the right to know how its food's produced, yes, and that they can eat it and feel safe and trusted as well. Who will be taking us through? Well, you're going to be taken through by David Opepo, oh. my hatchery uh, m operations manager, oh. who's going to show you all the way through the system. Oh. Welcome, David. I know he'll do a great job. Wow. He is the technically most proficient hatchery manager wow. in our group, yes. David, yes. now you have me for the whole day. For sure, yes. <laughs> Let's I'll go. Take you through. Have See a great you later. Day. Have Thank a great you. Day. Enjoy, David. So you normally hatch your own chicken? Yeah, you know, for I didn't sure. Know that. For sure. This is a state of the art cherry, and you'll be you will find it really very interesting. And it, yeah. I had it the biggest in East Africa. Or Actually, what? East and Central Africa. East and Central Africa. That's quite huge. For sure, it is. Yeah. Iyot and hatchery. Yes, Linda. Mm -hmm. This is a cherry, mm -hmm. and basically looking at it, and entrance is not gonna be as easy because <laughs> I think you have to go to take a shower. Yeah? Shower. Yes, for like sure. Like water. And it's in line with the food safety, which is actually beneficial to all of us. If it's the food safety, then sour. Okay. 
I will go shower. So where? The ladies are on the other side, so you'll go around as I go to the gents and then we'll meet inside. Okay, so see you on the other side then. Thank you, Linda. See okay. You. Wow, feeling so fresh. I've just had a warm nice shower. Now I'm ready for the hatchery. And at least they allowed me to do a little touch up. David, Linda, am I ready? <laughs> great, great, great. Good to go. Just one more step. The food did, please. Oh, yeah, that's better. Yeah. Just make sure you step on <laughs> uh -huh. for biosecurity requirements. This way, so we are ready to go into the hatchery. Okay. Yeah. Linda, one more step. Super big, yes. And it's just a hatchery. Yeah, for sure. We want to take another foot dip. Wow, it's full of eggs. Yes. So this is the first step. This is the first step mm -hmm. of egg processing in the hatchery. Oh, egg yes. processing. Egg processing, hatchery. yes. What really happens in this place? So in this room, Linda, this is our egg receiving cam processing room. And basically what happens here is egg grading. So as you can see, my staff are already grading eggs that have come from the breeder farms. And it entails generally transfer of eggs from the farm trays into the setter trays. Once they have done that, and basically what they look at is they have to grade out what seems to be dirty egg. And because it's an aspect of food safety, that we don't have to put in dirty eggs getting into the machines and that will help us in a way that making sure that the chickens that comes out from those eggs are not infected with any disease. You've talked about breeder farms. What does that really mean? The other farmers supply to you the eggs or you have your own breeder farms? These eggs actually come from our own farm. And the most critical thing is that all these eggs are actually labeled as a way of traceability, which actually, uh, if you look at it, Every stage, every process these eggs go, the labeling has to be kept. And by the end of the time, when you are having a chicken down there in the hotel, we make sure that that chicken, we can trace it back to the source. After you've graded the eggs here, where do they go next? What's the next stage? After grading of the eggs, you can see uh, the eggs actually put into the trolleys. And in this trolleys, then the eggs will be pulled into the setter machine. And at the certain machines, ideally the eggs would take a period of 18 days and then they would be again transferred into the hatches where they will spend the rest three days. I've noticed that in this facility, you're so keen with food safety measures. This room is actually normally audited by our own lab, which is accredited by SANAS. And they do swabs every week to check the microbiological levels or the microorganism levels of the hatchery, that they have to be at the right level. The other thing that happens is that uh, we also make sure that our operations uh, are actually looked through by the direct, Directorate of Veterinary Services, which actually uh, gives us the licensing to run the hatchery. So this is actually an air distribution duct that makes sure that the air is distributed in this room very evenly so that there's no hot spots and cold spots into oh. the machines, yeah? Okay. Into the eggs, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Oh, hot spots and cold spots. Okay. Another hatchery. Oh, yes, Linda. a different setup. Exactly. So this is the setup. What is it setting? <laughs> At the very initial phase of incubation, up and here. And that means the first 18 days of incubation. First 18 days. Exactly. And if you look at it, uh, the eggs actually um, are put in the machine and various parameters are monitored, including temperature. You can come close to the screen, you can see the temperature being monitored, humidity, CO2. And these eggs also have to turn after every one hour automatically. So what do you mean when you say turning? They literally turn? Change direction. The trolleys will always change direction facing different directions every one hour. So basically this is an incubator per se? Exactly, exactly, you're correct. So after 18 days you move them manually? No, from the incubators after the 18th day then we will draw, pull the trolleys out and take them to the next phase of incubation which is the last phase and we call that phase a hatcher. This is quite huge. How many eggs are here? Every machine holds about 129,000 eggs and if you look at it 
the whole capacity for the hatchery is about 1.3 million eggs a week. Whoa, those numbers are impressive. And that means then, at any given time in the hatchery, we have about 3.6 million eggs in the machines in different stages. So we go to the hatchery. I think we may take one of the trolleys, uh, which is actually ready for transfer, and take to the hatchery. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. So Linda, oh, so many now of this chick processing, yeah. Uh -huh, so what happens? Let's All right start here. now, uh, these chicks have just taken the last three days, uh -huh. the hatches, uh -huh. and they are ready for processing. Oh, wow, they are so tiny. Exactly. So uh -huh. they are only day old. So if you look old. over there, mm -hmm. basically you can see the very initial stage begins from separating chicks from the shells. vaccinated on their first day. These chicks undergo vaccination in their day one and that is the very best moment when you will get the antibodies developing well while the chicks are being placed at the farm. And it's also a very critical aspect of uh, our food safety because then the chicks cannot be attacked by any disease and therefore the meat that you will get from the chick will be disease free. I'm totally impressed by what you're doing here. So from here where do we go to? From here, basically we have two journeys. We have the farm to farm journey, which actually hands from the chicks moving from the hatchery to the DOC customer. The DOC, I mean the day old chick customer. The other aspect of the journey is the farm to fork. From here, our chicks are taken to our own broiler farms where they are reared for meat. Yes, and after then, then they actually carried to the thicker processing plant where they are slaughtered and they will end up in the market. Earlier on, I remember you mentioned about contract farming. How can a farmer qualify to be a contract farmer with Kenchi? We can engage anybody to be a contract farmer. Uh, the only things that we will require from the person is one of them, you have to be within 100 kilometers from the plant. That is a processing plant. We also would want you to be having quite a good portion of land, which is about five, five acres just to make sure that you keep people away so that diseases cannot get into your farm. The other aspect of it is that the minimum requirement for chick holding is about 12,000 chicks. I normally pick 1,000 pieces per week. I farm at Kitengela, a farm called uh, Flame Farm. I farm them for my uh, restaurants. I have a fast food in Nairobi called Flame Grill restaurants. So. We use the chicken for grilling and uh, some products do pizza uh, in our restaurants. And actually, our customer would compliment us with the quality of the chicken and they say it's tasty.
Anton, hey! Hi, Linda. Hello. Welcome to the Kenchik Processing Plant. Thank you, thank you. I've been looking for us to come here. Tell me, what's happening here? Well, here for Kenchik, we process our chicken mm -hmm. for our consumers and mm -hmm. uh, customers. Wow, I can't wait to see what you have. Please come in. Okay. Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Linda, to start off the process, I'm going to ask you to please get yourself some boots. Oh. I'll give you a coat, oh. and a hairnet, and a Okay, let me pick this. This is my size, I should go with it home. <laughs> <laughs> Now before we carry on, I'm just going to ask you to please remove all your jewellery and Whoa. armbands. Voila. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and so, I'm ready. Great, Linda. Mm -hmm. Let's proceed and let's go into the factory. Okay. Please he follow does me. Do. Mm, okay. So this is the entrance to the plant. So the first thing that we're going to do is wash our hands and sanitize. I think I'm clean enough. Right, so we'll go this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, are serious with the biosafety. Always. So, Linda, what should I expect there? Linda, firstly, it's going to be quite cold. Um, because this is our holding freezers for our finished frozen products. Uh -huh. um, obviously, the cold chain is very important for us, mm -hmm. and our dispatch area has to be cold, oh. and our vehicles mm -hmm. are all re refrigerated or yeah. suited for frozen. Why are we starting from the finishing area and not the beginning? We always want to maintain cleanliness in the factory. Mm -hmm. So this side of the factory we see as clean, yeah. and we'll work ourselves backwards to a less clean area, but they're <laughs> just as clean. Oh, okay, let's see. So Linda, <laughs> as you can feel, it's a bit chilly in here. It's not a bit, it's quite chilly. So it's very important for us to maintain the cold chain. So mm -hmm. we're always ensuring that our product that is frozen stays frozen. Mm -hmm. And when we send it to our customers and our consumers, mm -hmm. that they get the best quality product that we can supply them. So these are frozen chicken only or other products also? So this is all chicken, mm -hmm. um, just in its different forms in terms of our products. Mm -hmm. And for some of our customers, we also would store here. I can't stay here. Next. <laughs> Let's go to the main production hall. Well, we'll go to a slightly warmer place and that's where all the action is happening. Uh, tell me, what really happens in the processing units? This is the real hub of the factory where we process all our chicken. So when I say that, is where we now decide where and what we're going to pack. We might cut up the chicken or pack that whole bird for you. Um, so it depends on what our consumers are after and some of our customers that we also do some packing for. I've seen the steak, I've seen some wings. Which one is the fastest moving product here? Wow, if I could have a chicken with four wings and four drumsticks, that would be awesome. <laughs> so wings and drumsticks are by far the most popular cuts that we have. Take me through the food safety measures here. Firstly, we control the temperature. So the processing area, it's quite chilly in there. So, peop so people that aren't used to that uh, get a bit cold. It's just to ensure that the cold chain is maintained once we've chilled the bird down. And then obviously there's a lot of traceability that goes into food safety. Of course, there's some very basic uh, industry norms that we have to follow. So good manufacturing processes, processes and good health practices. So these things always ensure that we handle the product with care and always in, uh, with the, the consumer in mind to keep it nice and healthy and safe. Many people, when they look at Kenchik chicken, what the first thing that comes to their mind 
is it has been injected with particular chemicals for growth. Would, would you demystify this for us? It's, it's really not true. Um, it, it's, a, it's sort of a, a meme that's gone out. That people believe the internet trolling. Um, we can never give hormones to chickens. It will be way too expensive in any case. Um, and you don't want to do that. What we at Kenchik do is we make sure we give a very healthy diet to our chickens and ensure that we keep them nice and comfortable throughout the process of growing them. Um, so that when they arrive here, that, that we have the right chicken to process for, for our customers. So there's nothing that has been injected? Not at all. So it's safe? Very, very safe. I mean, I myself will eat it with no issues. Um, even with antibiotics, is, is we always test for antibiotics in our chicken because we don't use it unless it's absolutely necessary to keep the bird nice and healthy. This is a huge facility and you receive a lot of chicken here. How is the market's dynamics? Kenya is, is a very big market for, for, for chicken. Um, we are trying to get more processed chicken into the market, So, but with the retailers' help, uh, which we supply all the major retailers, we're seeing a very good uptake in the broiler meat market. And we also sell things like a free-range option for people that are more conscious on, on that front. Um, and it's a very tasty chicken as well. So we always try and cater to the market as best we can. So which one is the favorite product here for you? Then we've got a specific slow growing breed, which is called the Kembro, which is our free range chicken. It's new to the market and it's a very, very tasty chicken. It's a bit more slow growing chicken, um, but very, very tasty. It's my, by far my favorite. Apart from chicken, do you have any other product that you process here? We've got a further processing plant where we make some chicken sausages, smoked chicken sausage, polonies. Uh, so a lot of different items for different catering to different markets. We also have a, a smoked chicken uh, roll, which is a sliced product so that you can find at the deli counter. Very, very tasty, by the way. Um, so a good selection of different products and we're obviously continuously developing new ones to bring to market. We must test that free range before we live here. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Shall we go? Okay, let's go. Wow, Anton, this is such a beautiful view. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's a pleasure. <laughs> wow, so what do you have for us today? Well, I've deci decided to make some of my favorites, which mm -hmm. is a peri peri half chicken. Uh -huh. And then some portions of lemon and herb, and some chicken burrowash. I've never had some names, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go? Yes, I'm so hungry. I think the peri peri will really do. <laughs> <laughs> if I can just get it properly. Uh -huh. So how long will it take before we start eating this meat? Oh, probably about before. 20 or 30 minutes. Ah. I'll wait. I've seen some nice steaks and the breasts. So which one will take longer to cook? So chicken, you must always make sure that you cook it quite yeah. thoroughly. So yeah. what and they say, if you've got a thermometer about yeah. 72 degrees, yeah. uh, it's very safe to eat. Mm -hmm. What are the nutritional values of white meat? Because now this is white meat. So on the breast fillet, the white meat is very healthy. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a good protein in terms of low fat. So if you're on a diet, yeah. it's a very good protein to have mm -hmm. high energy. Mm -hmm. So always a good option if you're going to the gym. Yeah, wow, <laughs> you will cut the weight. Yes, and of course chicken is, is one of the more reliable and sustainable proteins in the world. Yeah. Um, it's got a low carbon footprint compared to a lot of other protein. Yeah. Um, and it's probably the most affordable protein in the world as well. So that's why it's slowly gaining popularity across board. For sure. Okay. Almost time to eat. Okay. So you said 10 minutes? This is so delicious. Mm. It is, and that's probably why we're so cuckoo about chicken. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so impressed by what you're doing here. Hope we've demystified poultry farming for you. Until next time, my name is Linda Koskei. Mm. <laughs>